shelf. I said, boy, the future looks good. I'm an optimist. You see where I'm going, don't you? The future looks good. So what I did, I just walked up to him. You can't be afraid of brothers. It's not going to hurt you. <laughs> you know, a lot of people don't believe me, but you, you know where I'm going on that one. So I walked up to a couple and I said, what's your name? Guy, one of the kids gave me his name. I said, for grade, he said eighth grade. I'm thinking, what are you going to do next year? Where are you going to school? He said, well, Mr. Stringer, I'm going to Marquette High. Boy, you talking about somebody who jumped up for joy. Marquette High School is one of the top high schools in the country, not just the city of Milwaukee State. Marquette High School. Another one told me, I'm going over to Bayview. One's going to Bayview. I told him, I used to have some real ties at Bayview High School. I'll tell you about that in just a second. Another one told me he's going to one of the other schools. And then this other kid said to me, he says, Mr. Henry, I'm not sure where I'm going. I said, well, why are you saying that? I'm not sure about what mama wants to do. I said, well, what's your dad think? This kid's 14 years old. He says, Mr. Henry, I haven't seen my dad in 14 years. You talking about something that'll kill a man. He says, I haven't seen my dad in 14 years. I'm being raised by my mother. You know, I'm only admitting this is an American society. And my grandmother. I said, that's okay. So each day I came over here for the last six weeks, and my grandson goes to school here. He's a fourth grader. I, I would come pick him up. I would talk to that kid. What are you going to do with your life? You know, he said, well, Mr. Henry, I'm only going to the ninth grade. I said, son, when I was in the eighth grade, I knew exactly what I was going to do. I was going to be a teacher. Didn't know where. I was going to be a teacher. You start thinking about your life and what you want to do with your life. I said, you don't want to live a life in the streets. Sometimes kids are forced to, especially our males. He said, no. I said, start thinking constructive. So I... Kept coming over here every day about, oh, I met about 2, 2, 10, 2, 15. But each day I came over here, I made sure I touched base with one of those young brothers. I just talked to them. You see, gentlemen, first of all, I'm glad you're here. What a message. What a message your being here sends to the principal of this school. What a message. Your presence, just your presence, even if you don't stay for half an hour and just walk out the door and go on home. What it says to that child that you represent, what it says to the new vice president, you have a new vice president, am I right about that? Yeah. There you go, see, the new vice president, you vice president. What a tremendous message. It says, it says to the children, I am interested in you. Mom and I may not have hit along, but I have, and which happens, which happens, come on guys, let's be real. You know, we, 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 we can't be phony with me because I've been there. <coughs> your presence, even if, even if you don't deal with mom on the regular, your presence says, I'm interested in my child. My son, my daughter, my grandson, et cetera, et cetera. Whatever the case may be. Let me go back. But but those six weeks were six weeks that I enjoyed. I used to tell my wife, she said, why are you going to the street school so early? And guess what it was? So I can see those nine or ten young brothers. You don't realize sometimes when you say something to one of these young brothers with all the vast, you guys have been everywhere. You guys have done stuff uh, <clears throat> good and not so good. But you need to share that with these young brothers so some of them won't fall into those pitfalls. You know what I'm saying, don't you? Even if it hasn't been all good. I haven't lived a perfect life and I'm almost 85. But people came along and helped me, grabbed me by the hand and Pull me up and help me. That's what you need to do. And so I enjoyed those six weeks. And so when she called me, I said, I don't know what to tell those young men. Those young men know more than I do. And so I said to my wife, I just don't want to just go and talk. Because I'm a very verbal person. I love talking to people. And I love trying to encourage people, especially children, but their parents too. And so you know what I did? I went into this old bag of stuff that I had that I used many years ago. And I said, I'm going to pull some of these things out. And I'm going to share it with these men this morning. That's what I said. 
A speech? Nah, I give them tons of speeches. You see, boys, young men, boys and girls have, have seen me all over the city. I came here in 1962 from a small town in Ohio, from Central State University. By the way, a black college in Ohio, where the gym teacher here, you know the gym teacher? What's his name, Ms. Clary? The gym teacher, the man. He and I are from the city. Good morning, Castry staff. This is the welcome. Some of you have seen that welcome. Okay, watch this. Coming in on time this morning, we are really pushing every student. When I found that so that you get a chance to have breakfast with your classmates and you can participate. That's a head man. That's a head man. To talk about issues, to share emotions, to talk about improvement strategies. Ooh, I like that. So please make sure you're talking to parents about getting you here by 725. Also, make sure you're being respectful throughout the day following all of our expectations. Uh, make sure those expectations carry over to the playground. We want you to be safe by keeping your hands and feet to yourselves. And in the classrooms, make sure we are respecting the teachers and respecting all classmates. We have been issuing a lot of lunch detentions 